No, and and my understanding is okay. So I talked to a guy today. His name is Nick Galifianakis. He's an artist, and he's here. Is it Nick or Zach? Nick. 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 And he's an artist, and he is friends with Watterson. And we talked about it. He goes, Watterson barely speaks to anybody. They're like best friends. And he said he's not interested. And I've never actually asked him. I did ask Steve Ditko, who created Spider-Man. I sent him, um, and he's a recluse that has never been photographed since the 1950s. And I did send him a letter, and I said, look, I, you know, his, he's in the New York phone book, so I found his address, and I sent him a letter, and I, I sent him, um, uh, well, initially I sent him a letter, I'm doing this project, and he wrote me back, which is unusual, because he doesn't write anybody back. And he said, uh, it sounds like a great project, I'm not interested, but thank you for asking. He says, it never hurts to ask. So after the book came out, I went ahead and sent him a copy. Just, I put a letter in it. I said, I don't know if you remember me. I asked you about this. I just wanted you to see how it looks. And this is what I was doing. And if you ever wake up one morning and just feel like you need a photograph, don't hesitate to call me. He wrote me another letter. And he said, and he liked the book. And he said, thanks for sending this. And it has a nice feel. It's something, something about a certain type of artist. And he said, I'm still not interested. But if I ever wake up one morning and feel like I need a photograph, this is all the evidence I would ever need. And I thought, okay, that's a win. And he signed it, Steve Ditko. And he signed nothing. So I have two letters signed by Steve Ditko. And who else? Um, I did at one point have a chance to talk to Bob Kane before he found and, and I didn't, you know, Bob Kane created Batman. Quote yeah. so, so I reached out to him and he basically told me no. And he, I, so he called me back and he, he said, yeah, I don't think so. And I said, well, I got Jack Kirby in the project, you know, throwing the Kirby card back out there. The Kirby he goes, I swear to you, he goes, well, it's good you got Jack in the project, but you need me. <laughs> and I said, well, that's why I'm calling. Yeah, I'm not interested, but thanks for asking. <laughs> and he goes, well, you keep after me, okay? Yeah, that's what I'll do. And then later on, of course, it's come out that he didn't do much except own Batman. And mm -hmm. He had a lot of great artists working on Batman. But, but you know, you never know. I mean, um, crazy stuff happens all the time. And then, I, you know, so anybody else? And, uh, yeah, the, you can check out the, the Bill Finger documentary on uh, Bob Kane on Hulu. Oh, that's right. Anyway, yeah. Uh, have you uh, considered artists who are not well known in, in the United States, but maybe in Japan or? Absolutely. Um, because I'm doing it on my own dime, yeah. and I always have. That's always been one of the reasons. Because if I had a real publisher and they gave me real money, mm -hmm. I'd have to finish it within real time. Mm -hmm. And so the, you know, and so if, if a publisher came up and said, "Yeah, I'll give you twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars." I go, how much time do I have? Because these take about 10 years. And well, who would publish in their right mind would drop $20,000 on a project that's going to take 14 or 10 years? Um, but yes, I would love to. You know, Miyazaki would mm -hmm. be unbelievable. Or um, the guy down here at the end um, who's painting. I mean, um, what is his name? John? John? Huh? Frank. Uh, Frank. Hey. Hey. Um, I would love to photograph him. He lives in Belgium. And so how I've been able to afford doing this is whenever um, I get a job somewhere, I look well, on someone else's dime, I look to see what cartoonists are there. And, um, and I'll call them, I'll say, I'm coming out, and I'll be there shooting this job, and maybe I can come find you. And they're like always generally now pretty good after book one. I generally don't have very few people turning me down. I think, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to uh, just going to say, is, is it sounding to you a little bit like you know he's got an idea for you know <laughs> something else over <laughs> three years? Like yeah, yeah it's, you know I I, I, <laughs> I don't know about you know how <laughs> my wife long suffering wife would feel about we're starting patience and understanding <laughs> and right. you know, tells her heart. We're starting. To, so she did say. Um, after book two came out, well, you're not doing another one of these. And I was like, well, and she was like, 
So maybe one more. If I, you know, if I can. So I, the first one took 15 years. The second one took 10 years. If I can get it down to five years, <laughs> maybe I could do one more. So. Yeah, well, just walking down, down the halls with you, you were always going, look, look at this guy over here. Look at what he's, you know. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, look for it. Anyway, yeah. so other questions? Yeah. Say it again. Stan Lee, so besides me being a writer and not an artist, um, I talked to Stan about doing it because I would photograph him in a second. Um, you can't really get near him anymore. Um, he's kind of um, he's kind of one of those untouchables. There's a few people who, unless you know somebody who knows them and will make that introduction for you, I got an introduction to Stan Lee through Neil Adams. And Neil goes, Stan, you have to be in this guy's book. And Stan is all yeses. He's like, absolutely, absolutely. Hand him my card. <laughs> Some guy's carrying his cards around, you know. <laughs> pulls out a card. I call the number, nothing. So unless, and I'm not really sure, you know, Stan is what, 90? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I would love to photograph Stan Lee just because he's Stan Lee. But I've never had a chance to do it. And I can never get him to, a, to say he'll do it. So, are you his daughter? I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, his granddaughter, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you know somebody who knows Stan, hook me up, because I'm in. Yeah. And he lives in L.A., so. <laughs> and he is charging exorbitant amounts for his signature. Autograph, that's right. So, so yeah, maybe I would pay, pay right price. I would totally come up with, like, a five spot to photograph Stan, maybe 20 bucks. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, then the rest of them will work. Uh, <laughs> any, any other questions? Any, any other suggestions for, for book three or comments about one and two? There we go. So, yeah, I've got a whole list of people I want so far in book three, but uh, we'll see. I, you know, it's hard to say. Uh, anybody here know Seth McFarland? <laughs> Yeah, let's let's network here. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, it was it was great to hear your uh, you know your stories about you know the, the people that you met and such that you know and the ones that you mentioned that you liked. It's like you know these these are really good people. Were there were there people that like really gave you such a you know they agreed to do it and then they turned out to be just so difficult. You know, <laughs> I, this is kind of a setup question because. Um, not difficult in that way, but so I did get to photograph Jim Steranko, hmm. and it was a strange shoot. Thank you. Um, Jim Steranko is, by all accounts, a vampire. Um, he only works in the middle of the night. He doesn't work during the day, and uh, to get him on the phone, you have to call him at midnight, and he answers. And so I had his number, and I called him, and I explained the project, and he said, sure. And he lives in Reading, Pennsylvania, in a what can be best described as a row mansion. I guess. I mean, it's a mansion, but connected to other mansions, and um, built by the Penn family in 18 whatever. And so we agreed that I'm going to come over there at six at night, and he's going to meet me, and we're going to do this shoot. And I get there, and it's this massive house, and I go in. And um, I'm looking around, and it's like, he does, I, I, right away, I'm like, something's wrong here, because, I mean, it's dusty. There's original sun wounds on the wall um, from pulp magazines from the 1930s and 20s, and original art everywhere, but no original art by Steranko. And there's a library. The library has cobwebs in it. And I'm like, looking around this house, and it's like, Okay, and, and he's like, this is my house. And I'm like, nobody lives here. And so he has this shop set up, and it's in this book, or it's in this book, and he has a shop set up, but it's with a baby grand piano. And I'm like, so you want to be photographed with your baby grand piano? He goes, yes, this is what I want. And I'm like, okay. And, and so I start setting up, and... I don't know um, how well you can yeah. how well you can see this, but um, so he's dressed in a white tuxedo, and he wants to sit at the baby grand piano and be photographed. 
And I'm like, okay, and obviously he is a piano player. This is in my mind. Okay, we're going to do this at this piano, not in his studio. And so we're setting up the lights, and I'm taking Polaroids, because this was when I was still shooting film. And he's sitting there at the piano, and he played three notes, and he'd look up and smile. And I'm waiting for him to break into playing stuff. And he doesn't do it. He's like, not even canoodling. I mean, he's like, it'd be like, and he'd look up, and I'm like, so, and I'm waiting for him to play something. So we set the lights, four hours of shooting Polaroids later, and I'm out of Polaroids. I say, okay, we gotta shoot this shot. And he goes, okay, and so I shoot the shot, and he goes, but I want the right to retouch it. I'm like, okay. But I said, I really want to photograph you over here in this library too. And he's like, I don't really want that. And, but I talk him into it. And we go into this library, and it's this kind of amazing old library. It's covered in cobwebs, and there's dust everywhere. And through this door on the side of the library is a woman. Through the door, it's glass pane. And there's a woman sitting in there, and she is dressed to the nines in like 1940s clothing. And I'm looking at her, and there's two dogs. And I'm like, okay. And this is getting stranger. And I photograph him in the library. And while we're photographing, now mind you, this is his house, right? The dog somehow gets to the kitchen door and comes and stands in the middle of the room. And it's um, like a Sheltie or a Australian sheep dog. And Jim goes, Jim Storenko, he Jim goes, okay, back in the kitchen. And I'm watching him, and I'm watching the dog. The dog is not paying attention to him. And he goes, back in the kitchen. <laughs> and I'm like, this is not his dog. Because <laughs> my dog, if I say my dog's name, my dog looks at me. He won't touch the dog, and he won't, you know, he's not interacting with the dog. And I'm like, this is not his dog. I am being set up here. This is. This, and, okay, so you know Storenko, before he was an artist, was a magician. And magicians play you, and they show you what they want you to see, blue smoke, you know. Don't look here, look here. And he's playing me, and I get this impression that this is not his house, this is not his dog. That woman who he introduced as his wife through the door, she doesn't know me. Finally, she comes out, takes the dog by the collar, and walks it back into the kitchen. Okay. We finish the shoot, and we go sit down on the sofa in the main room across from the piano, and the woman is sitting across from me diagonally. Jim is sitting on this end of the sofa, so there's two sofas facing a middle table, and I sit down, and Jim goes, I'll be right back. All right. Um, and so the woman is sitting there staring straight ahead, and I go, thanks for letting me come photograph you in your house. And she looks over at me and she goes, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> and it's four in the morning. <laughs> and this hand goes up my spine. And what I didn't realize, and I I, I didn't know what was going on. All of a sudden, I'm like completely baffled. And I go, well, I'm photographing your husband. Oh, you're taking pictures? I said, yeah. And she goes, well, what do you think of these pictures? And taped to the wall next to her are pictures of, like, baby cats and baby dogs and baby elephants and baby... And there's, like, tape to the wall right next to her in the living room. And I'm like, okay, God, you know, okay, this is weird. So I found out later that this was his wife, and she was suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's, and she was just there but she wasn't putting it together. And I didn't know at the time, but at the time, without knowing that, I am creeped out to the max. Okay? What are you doing here? Um, so finally Jim comes back, sits on the sofa, we chat for a minute. My assistant, who was with me, had gone out to bring all the stuff down to the car. And he has not come back in been an hour. <laughs> and, and so, I go, you know what, i got to go find Lynn. I don't know what's going on. It's four in the morning. I go, here, let's go find Lynn. And we go to that, and we go to the door, and there's steps down to the street, and Lynn is nowhere to be seen. My car is there. All the gear I can see kind of shadows in the car. And I'm like, this is weird. Oh, and it's foggy outside. 
And, I, and all of a sudden I'm like, this is so bad. We were going to end up like chopped up somewhere, you know. <laughs> and up comes Lynn's walking up the street. I'm like, finally. So I see him walking up the street through the fog, and the fog is swirling around, and it's a little bit breezy. And I'm like, okay, well, we're going to go, Jim. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And I hop down these like 40 steps to the street. And I go, where are the F of you? She goes, it was getting so creepy in there, I couldn't come back here. <laughs> and I said, and you left me in there. <laughs> he said, well, I had all this garbage from the chute, all the Polaroid garbage. And I wanted to go find a garbage can, put it in, and across the street was a park. And he says, I thought there would be a garbage can in the park. So I went into the park, and it's foggy, and there's pictures in the park that are statues standing in the park, and he goes up to one of them, and it's a statue, and there's statues in the park standing in the fog, and not one garbage can. And so he, for an hour, he's walking around this park with nobody in it, these figures that look like human beings, and he's weirded out. And we finally get in the car, speed off, and I'm just like, was that strange, or is this just me? He goes, no, this was strange. And so, um, Later on, I send Jim the photos, and he says, well, I want to retouch this one. And I said, okay. And so, if you look in the book, he's retouched his 30-year-old face into his 75-year-old body. <laughs> and, um, and so it's got this very surreal, young Jim Stryko photo that I didn't do sitting in my photo. <laughs> and initially, I was like, I can't use this. How can I use this? This is not my photo. This is a retouch something. And it's not great retouching. And so I called Mark Chiarello, who kind of set up the shoot, who's DC Comics creative director. And we'll be here on Sunday. And we'll be here on Sunday to sign. And I go, I can't use this. He goes, send it to me. And I send it to him. He called me back up, he goes, are you shitting me? <laughs> and I'm like, nope. And he goes, you gotta use it. I said, I cannot use this photo. He goes, Greg, it's Jim Steranko. And I'm like, got it. Okay. So I used the photo and it, it, it is just, it's the most surreal photo. It's uh, like, a, um, he goes, this will be your Diane Arbus shot. You know, <laughs> you know the reference. This is her <laughs> Diane Arbus shot. <laughs> Diane Arbus, if you don't know, was this famous photographer in New York in the 1950s and 60s who did these very unusual photos of circus performers and um, just um, disabled people. And they were so unusual. And, um, and so that is <laughs> my Diane Arbus shot. So. And, you know, th this is, you, you just heard a handful of, of stories. You know, just imagine now, you know, 225 total, you know, uh, 240, yeah. yeah, 240, you know, he's got that many stories, and I've heard, like, many more. But, you know, even, you know, another thing to consider about these, these photos that we, you know, haven't even really started up, just to you know, wrap things up, is that they are gorgeous. This is a kind of coffee table book where you just, you know, it really helps to, you will go and like pick it up again and it's like, you know, the detail and the care and the lighting and the textures and, you know, being able to, you know, this is the sharpness where you can read the bookshelves, you know, and these are just so lush and they so much capture their personality. It's like, you know, really, you really need to, to check out uh, <laughs> these books and um, I just, you know, thank you very much. You Great right. Preston, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming out. I know that Disney was next door. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure it was full, so you guys can all look over. Yeah, this, <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, you hope <laughs> full people. <laughs> no, thank you. This is great. Let's chat a little bit.